I am pleased to introduce Ashley Mills from the California's Mental Health Services Oversight and Accountability Commission. Ashley was the lead author on the commission's report, Striving for Zero, California's Strategic Plan for Suicide Prevention 2020 to 2025. Ashley will be sharing uh, just a bit about some of the strategies included in this report. Um, Ashley. Thank you so much. Um, it's so great to be here. Thank you so much for the invitation to speak with all of you today. Um, we're, we're really excited about all the work that's happening at the state level. Um, and so um, I'm hoping to um, rather quickly move through what we're currently, um, or what was in our current state plan, but then spend uh, most of the time kind of talking through what uh, is happening at the state level, um, particularly uh, in response to um, COVID-19 and, and the dramatic changes that our communities have been um, transitioning through and will continue to transition through as we um, go through the rest, the remainder of this year. Um, so um, thank you all so much again. Um, let's see, can I move, I'm trying to see if I can advance my slides here. There we go. Okay, great. Um, so very quickly, the strategic plan is organized around five strategic, I'm sorry, four strategic aims and 12 goals. And I'll be moving through those um, in just a minute. It also included within the state strategy is a lot of information um, to provide some background around suicide, um, particularly around um, developing shared definitions of uh, suicide and suicidal behavior. So what does it mean um, uh, when we say suicidal ideation, for example? What are the, um, what's the continuum of risk? What are some of the predominant theories around um, how suicide um, comes to be? Um, and, and what are the different inter interaction, interactions happening with different factors that put people at risk for, um, for suicide? And then I'll be talking very briefly about the state's work plan, focusing more on what the state is currently doing. And so just in the way of background, the commission was asked to develop a new state strategy for suicide prevention in 2018. Our last plan was developed in 2008. And so this effort was to um, review that plan, look at what we were currently doing around suicide prevention, um, talk with subject matter experts. Many of you um, who are on this, this uh, meeting today, um, you may have been um, part of our process to develop our current state strategy, so thank you. Um, and I know that we were, um, we held a meeting in Fresno and, and we had a really um, great showing there. So um, we really wanted to work with communities to identify what was working well, where we still needed to put um, a lot of our energy and effort into lifting up and scaling up effective practices across our state. And we wanted to really hear from communities the diversity of needs and, and how suicidal behavior was being expressed in different communities. And so foundational to our plan is the public health approach. So raising awareness around um, suicide as a public health crisis. Um, there is a strong mental health component, but it really is a public health and takes a public health approach. And, and I'll share a little bit about what I mean by that. Foundational to this plan and to much of our suicide prevention work is the public health model, which is all about using data and information from your community members to really help define the problem of suicidal behavior in your community. So whether that is um, youth suicide um, attempts that you're um, hoping to address or um, death among your older adults, um, whatever it is that you, that you have used your data and information from your communities to define the challenge of suicidal behavior in your communities, then identifying risk and protective factors. So those factors that buffer against that risk and then using that information to help shape uh, strategies for suicide prevention. Really important here is to evaluate um, and to monitor and to track changes in, in suicidal behavior using your interventions. And then those that are working well, bring them to scale and those that are not working so well, reevaluate. 
And so at the state level, we're hoping to um, model that in terms of how we use our data and um, considering different programs and strategies around suicide prevention um, in that very same way. Um, and so it's, it's more challenging um, because there is so much diversity at the state level, but the state strategy was really intended to um, be as inclusive as possible while giving lots of flexibility to communities, recognizing community need. So I'll very quickly go through our strategic aims um, and then some of the goals that are underneath each one of those aims. And then we'll, we'll dive a little bit deeper into what's currently happening at the state level around suicide prevention. Strategic aim is all about um, establishing a suicide prevention infrastructure. The, so this is leadership. This is your uh, local coalition. Um, this is your local private public partnership. This is being very clear about um, roles and responsibilities. Who's going to take on what? How are collaborations going to happen? Are we going to create work groups? Are we going to create an implementation plan? Um, this is the backbone of suicide prevention and community. And then using that backbone to, as a method to um, develop coordination and making sure that assets are being leveraged. Um, and that relationships are being leveraged and that there's really clear um, pathways. Um, so those could be MOUs, for example, using a really practical approach. So if you have a relationship with a hospital, um, you know, what does that uh, relationship look like in transitioning youth who may have attempted suicide back into the school setting? What do the schools need to know? What does the hospital need to know? How can that pathway be um, as, as clear as possible so that student can be supported as they transition? And then goal three is all around data and information. So making sure that um, potentially working with coroner's offices um, or your medical examiner, um, but having that clear relationship with um, folks who are in a position to be collecting that data um, on death, on, um, on attempts, so that you can use that information to strengthen your suicide prevention um, responses. Strategic aim two is all about minimizing risk at the population level. So this includes um, goals around increasing safety in your environment, which includes reducing access to lethal means, including firearms, um, medications, bridges and railways, um, doing that surveillance to see what are um, those threats in our community, how can we minimize those threats to people who may be at risk. And then empowering our families, our communities, our educators, all of our partners in being able to um, have the information and awareness around when to reach out for help. Making sure that those connections are clear, um, available, um, culture and linguistically appropriate um, so that people can get the need, um, can get their needs met in a timely manner. Um, goal six is all about increasing connectedness, which we're recognizing now is, is important now more than ever. As people become um, isolated, um, they're socially distancing um, in a way that may be putting their health and their mental health at risk. And so how can we create a little bit more awareness around um, reducing loneliness, reducing isolation in a way that is still um, responsive to the threat um, of the COVID-19 pandemic? Goal seven, increasing the use of best practices, um, connecting with our media partners, making sure that suicides are being reported in a way that doesn't increase risk um, for survivors. Strategic aim, increasing early identification and connection to services. So these include goals around early detection and screening. Um, this can include um, screening in our schools, which I'll talk a little bit about um, in a little bit. And then um, goal nine is delivering a continuum of crisis services. So ensuring that if somebody does, um, if they are in crisis, um, that we have a, a system of response, and whether that is someone calling a hotline um, or someone needing a mobile crisis support um, or somebody needing crisis residential, what are the resources in our community that can help support people in crisis so that we can avoid um, uh, emergency services if, if that's appropriate um, and get somebody into um, a, a care that is, um, that is appropriate for their level of risk. And then finally, strategic aim four is around um, people who are at our, our highest risk, um, those who are um, receiving suicide-related services and supports. And this includes our survivors of loss. 
Um, so our survivors of loss or survivors um, of attempt, these are folks that we know are, are at increased risk. Um, and so we want to make sure that we have a coordinated approach to delivering best practices um, in our care settings. So making sure that our providers have the latest in terms of what are best practices for risk assessment and risk management. Um, and then how are we following up with those folks, ensuring this continuity of care as folks are transitioning out of our care systems, back into schools, back into the home, back into um, the workplace. Um, we need to make sure that there is that continuity of support. These folks are, are, are most at risk and um, we need to make sure that, that no one falls through, through the cracks. And then finally, um, goal 12 is expanding those support services for survivors. Um, so this could include methods of um, uh, responding if there is a, a youth suicide, for example, in our communities, having that response in a way that is informed um, by survivors so that um, those people who are grieving um, and in, in experiencing complex grief are supported in a way that doesn't increase risk. So that was a very quick run through of the goals. There's a lot of information in the plan. Um, it was intended to provide a lot of information um, so that it was in one place and so that folks didn't have to um, uh, consult the literature, consult the subject matter experts, consult um, a variety of different resources, but really have it condensed down into the state strategy. And so there are specific objectives up the state, regional, and local levels to help support that local strategic planning and implementation. So at the state level, I'm really excited to share that um, the state had um, uh, um, enacted a piece of legislation that would authorize the establishment of the Office of Suicide Prevention within California's Department of um, Public Health. And so this is really critical because there are, there's so many, um, there's so much happening around suicide prevention, which is very exciting, but this leadership is needed in order to coordinate those efforts to talk across different departments. So Department of Education, Department of Healthcare Services, De um, the Mental Health Services Oversight and Accountability Commission, where I am. Um, Stan's gonna talk a little bit about everyone playing a role. And so um, we recognize that our state departments also play a role and that we need to have the shared vision um, and that leadership could really help us in making sure that our efforts are coordinated and that they're really targeting um, our communities and giving the resources that our communities need. And so this includes state level infrastructure investment like tr investments in training, data evaluation, learning collaboratives, program evaluation. Um, so just to share a little bit, the office is, um, it's authorized to be established, but we still need the funding. And so right now we are working with our, our um, state partners in Department of Finance and um, other state leaders in trying to identify how we can make sure that that Office of Suicide Prevention is established and not only established, but well-resourced. Um, and so we're looking at um, all available funding in order to make that happen. So that's that's one um, area of, um, of movement in terms of state leadership and forming state leadership. And so um, if you're interested, you can track Assembly Bill um, 234, which is Assembly Member, Assembly Member Ramos's bill. Um, it's currently in, um, it's been referred to the Committee on Health. And so that piece of legislation um, will remove the restriction around using existing resources so that we can make sure that um, that office is, is fully resourced. I also wanted to share um, that the commission um, has since been authorized to use $2 million of our own budget um, in order to begin implementation of Striving for Zero. So this is not new funding. This is um, $2 million of our own operations budget that we really wanted to put towards suicide prevention, recognizing the tremendous need, especially after um, all of the, um, everything resulting from the, the pandemic. And so we're starting a couple of initiatives around local support for planning implementation. We're also doing um, some additional support around lethal means safety and um, promoting awareness around lethal means safety. That could be firearms, it could be medications, um, but really helping to lift that up as a strategy that has a really strong evidence base. Um, and so we're, we're just beginning that initiative now. And, and really exciting is our initiative around um, 
uh, providing more support for educators for doing suicide risk screenings in schools. And so we're currently working right now to um, work with a contractor to develop a scope of work that would, um, that would work with educators, work with schools, work with students to identify a screening tool that could be implemented in our schools and then guidance for how that screening tool and triage can be built into the suicide prevention policies that are required. So lots happening, um, lots in the beginning stages, lots of development um, underway. Um, I will share with you very recently, the commission prioritized another million dollars um, for student mental health with an emphasis on suicide um, youth uh, youth suicide prevention. And so lots happening, um, lots of opportunity to provide guidance for us and for other state leaders um, and what you're seeing and how we can shape those investments together. You can find our plan, Striving for Zero, on the Commission's website. Um, a Spanish translated version is available. We're currently um, revising our website. So um, the uh, Spanish translated language isn't up right now, but it will be. But if you need it, please let me know. I'd be happy to share it. Um, also too, we have another report that the commission had um, author, uh, authored um, on student mental health and that report is also available on our website. There's some in there about suicide, uh, youth suicide prevention, but it's really focused around um, uh, schools as centers of wellness and, and what the state needs to do in order to, to get there. So thank you so much. I really appreciate the time. Lots to pack in, lots to talk about. Happy to share more um, if you would like and, and just really excited to, to continue to partner.